Got one of the biggest artists in the world today, Nicki Jam. <laughs> I had this girlfriend. You know, we get in a little argument or whatever. She'd be like, look who the f is in my DM. And I swear to God, you were in there. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> like, you have ADD? Yeah. Always in f***ing trouble, man, because of that. The teacher was getting in class and I was playing with my The teacher's man. looking at me like, you're like, I got ADD. What do you want? Girls love me, bro. You got Riz, dude. Yeah. Do you know what that means? I got what? Dude, he shouldn't have said that. <laughs> You know, we've just... To say the least. Yeah. <laughs> to say the least. But you and I both, buddy. <laughs> you and I both. We've done so many of these episodes. We're at like 300 something and yet i still feel every time i sit down it's like my first one like i feel so mm. stupid i feel like i don't know anything this one's a little different our shows usually start around 1 2 p.m I know. you know we get up go to the gym yeah. have a whole day beforehand we flew in we got a call it was like the bat signal went up in the sky boop, psh, psh, boop, psh. got on a, a red eye economy <laughs> you, oh really Dude, there's no lay flats, bro. Uh. From from LA, <laughs> landed four in the morning, flew to the studio because we got a big guest, and it had to happen. Yeah, we had to happen. We got two big guests today. We're in Miami, Florida. Uh, shout out to the venue. The venue is called More Play, More Play Rich People. More Play with More Play. We're playing with the rich people. We're, we're playing with rich music. Um, listen, guys, we got one of the biggest artists in the world today. Uh, and also, welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. Thank you for listening, watching, viewing, and subscribing. Listen, got one of the biggest artists in the world today. He uprooted us from our homes and brought us to Miami, 10 a.m. to do a podcast. We never do podcasts this early, but we're doing it today. He is one of the biggest Latin pop culture icons in the world. He has countless platinum records and number one hits. He has five music videos with over a billion views on YouTube. The dude has just as many subscribers as I do. This is my full-time job. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it is Nicky Jam. <laughs> What up, yes, baby? Sir. What up? What's up, bro? Oh, I gotta wear this, right? You don't. You don't. You know what? You don't have to. Nah, you should. That nah, sounds better. Yeah, yeah, it does yeah, sound. Yeah. It does sound better. Right. I yeah. got it. Let's do it. How's the audio? Is I mean, you're an audio guy. Awesome. Man. <laughs> 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 sounds good. Feels good. You a morning? You big morning guy? Yeah, what's, I am. Why? I am. What's, what? Why? Why ten a.m.? Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I think it, I, I I just think that when you wake up in the morning, you you do more things in, during the day. You know what I'm saying? So I just, if I don't close at least two deals in a day, I'm not happy. Did I'm you close? Like, oh did you close God. any deals yet today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I closed one deal right now. Really? Yeah, for another restaurant. We're doing restaurants now and hotels. That's what I'm in. Yo, that's so many deals. Yeah. <laughs> like at the end of the year, you're talking over 700 deals? <laughs> I, no, I'm saying if I if I don't do it, I'm not I'm not happy. So, so a lot of days I'm not happy. Right, right, right. <laughs> okay, okay. I see, I see. I'm not saying I closed all those <laughs> oh, deals. I'm I, trying. I see. But today was a good day. Okay, good. You got one deal done. Got one deal done. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm I'm here sitting with you, fine guys. This counts as a deal. This is, yeah, man, yeah, this is awesome, This man. definitely counts as I mean, I've see, I seen you a lot on, on social media. I've seen you guys, and it's, um, I'm, I'm a little starstruck. I ain't going to lie. I'm always watching you <laughs> doing your thing. And you living in Puerto Rico, too? Yeah, let's you know, talk I'm about Puerto it. I'm Puerto Rican, man. I know, I know. That's I know. what's up. That's moved, what's up. moved there at 10 years old, right? Yeah, I moved there when I was 10 years old. I was born in Boston, Massachusetts. Yep. And... um. It, it was it was very different. Boston from Puerto, Puerto Rico from Boston. For very, sure. For yeah. sure. You had a Dominican mother? My, my mom's Dominican, and yeah. Your, your father's Puerto Rican. And my dad's Puerto Rican. Got it. You know why I like you, Nicky Jam? Why? You've been through some shit, bro. You've yeah. been through some shit. Yeah, man. And uh, I say that kind of lightheartedly, but not really, because I think Mike and I, as people who have also been through some shit, that's the kind of people we relate to. That's the kind of people we vibe with. And I was just, you know, doing my research on you and on... Uh, on making sure this podcast is the best it can be, and man, you have quite the story. And and I think I think making it out of the boondocks and and, and getting out of the mud inspires a lot of people because now you're performing and and operating at the highest level. You know, like I mean, you guys can relate on on the uh, the, the the drug side of things and making it out, even like the weight loss side of things. But uh, oh, yeah. congratulations, man! It's, Appreciate it. Yeah, man, it's an honor to be sitting in your presence and we'll put this right. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, so Puerto Rico, where'd you live? Uh, I lived in Puerto Rico in a place called Cataño. It's, a, it's, it's across the, the sea from, from, from San Juan, mm. from old San Juan. Mm -mm. I lived in Cataño and I live all around the cities. When you try to make it as a singer, you gotta just move around, you know? Mm -mm -mm. But I lived in all, mostly all Puerto Rico and uh, 
but Catania, you could say it's 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 the city where uh, I'm from. It, I heard you got your start by like rapping about groceries. <laughs> no, I used to pack. <laughs> no, gro- I'm rapping about I used, groceries. I, so, someone yeah, overheard it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I used to pack groceries uh, when I was like 10 years old, so I could make money. You know, I used to get like 20 dollars a day. Yeah. You know, quarters and quarters and, and, and that's big bucks back then. Yeah, back then, back in 91, 92, I was I was awesome with that. I could buy you know milk. Uh, you know, rice, ham, cheese. We could eat. We was it was <laughs> yeah. good for the house because we was really poor. And uh, I used to freestyle while I was uh, packing the groceries. You know, what I'm saying obviously in Spanish. Yeah. It's like, you know, you got the ketchup and the lettuce and yeah. then I used to, <laughs> and 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 I, I became a little celebrity. You know, what I'm saying and, and and everybody like, yo, you saw this little kid be rapping while he packing groceries. And uh, this lady, um, she was the wife of uh, of this guy that was a manager for a record label. And she came to me. She's like, yo. Can I take you home? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm, she wanted I'm, to bag you up. I mean, bring. I know you like my rhymes, but I'm, I'm going with you. And she was like, no, it's my husband. He's a he's a he's a manager for a record label. I'm like, okay, I'll go home with you. So I went I went to his house and uh, I, I I rapped for him and he liked it. And like two days after, he came to my house with a huge ass contract like that. I told my dad. Can I curse? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck with what it said. Just sign that shit. He signed that shit. We did the fucking album. The album was whack as fuck because I was like, probably like nine, ten years old. There's no can't be creative when you're ten years <laughs> <Yeah>. old. <laughs> but the 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 mix the the mixtapes the DJs from the mixtapes they like this you know they like my style and they're like yo and that's that was the underground reggaeton. Uh, began from the DJs. That's where Daddy Yankee came out. That's mm. when uh, me and a whole bunch of other reggaeton artists from Puerto Rico. You didn't read the contract? I didn't read shit, bro. <laughs> Just I didn't give a fuck. I got <laughs> fucked. I didn't care. I didn't got one not one penny from that fucking album. It was. Okay, did you, oh, that was in the contract. You you get nothing. You're fucked. Yeah. I think it, was, it said you're fucked. You're fucked. You're fucked. You're fucked. You're fucked. Same contract. You're fucked. You're fucked. You're fucked for five five years. He signed the same contract. You signed that contract. Same person, bro. <laughs> Come on, man, Jake. I, I would. I don't think you would do that. No, 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 no. I made my. Oh, rich. today. Oh, but you Very need to. Rich, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. No, that's right. But you need, like, for me, I, I you need to get fucked once, right? So you don't get fucked again. Mom and dad always yeah. said that growing up. Yeah, it's the yeah. reality. You know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta take it. Sometimes yeah. you gotta take it. So you can, you know, it sounds weird. Yeah. But it's the reality. And then from that, that's what made me have one of the best businesses in the industry when I came back, when I did my comeback. Because my mentality is like, I'm, you know, I want the best contract in the world. Yeah. And they yeah. used my contract for a ho- to, to sign... They use my my contract for blueprint for a lot of artists in this new generation because sure. I did move that nobody done. So you know, from be, from being the guy that did the wackest, uh, I'm fucked, I'm fucked uh, <laughs> contract to make, doing a contract that a whole bunch of other artists started using it as a blueprint. You know that that that's that's badass. So that's big in the music industry now. I think artists in general are kind of taking more control of of what they're making. What yeah. about that contract became blueprint ish for for artists nowadays? <sighs> Bro. No, not signing a 360 deal because a whole bunch of artists were signing 360 deals. O- like like owning, si- si- signing away m- merch. Piece of everything. Uh, 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 like 360 is every, yeah, nothing's everything, yours. Yeah, yeah, oh, shit. Yeah. They will put all the money in the world for you. They'll make you a big superstar, but you don't own shit. Yeah. Apart from that, um, me, ha- me not letting the uh, record label determine what the fuck I'm going to come out with mm. in terms of music. Mm, mm. And apart from that... Um, Masters, only my masters. Yeah, that's a big one. So you know, I, I, I in the Spanish, in the English game, it was happening already. Hip hoppers was, you know, you had your Jay Zs, a whole bunch of rappers that were smart about it. But in the Spanish game, it was kind of like, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that uh, reggaeton artists didn't do it before me, mm. but uh, my contract was really like something that it was spoken of in business terms. When did you, when did you discover the power to to reshape your contract and do that kind of thing? Like, what what year was it? <clears throat> and 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 did like did social media and 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 clout or anything like that have to do with your ability to demand a hundred percent? Okay, because that's thing I, is, I was curious about the, that. The thing is to tell you a little bit about my story. You know, I um, I was really big in Puerto Rico for a whole bunch of years, and then uh, I, I went into drugs, and 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 I got in jail. I was in jail, and I was like the embarrassment of the of the music industry. So from being one of the biggest artists, I was the biggest embarrassment. And then I, I had no money. I was like really like messed up in my in my career, and they called me to go to Colombia and to do a show. And they made me do this show in Colombia where everybody was like 
I was the only guy that was like not, didn't have a song popping in that moment. I was like the old school cat, and everybody was killing the game. I went over there. I'm like, yo, why are these people bringing me over here? You know what I'm saying? Like, I have no songs right now. It's embarrassing because when you go on stage and you sing an old songs and you have these kids with the new shit, you feel like, you know. So, but for some reason, I I went on stage and it was like they really saw me as a legend. And um, to make the long story short, I uh, uh, I started I started seeing that Colombia had almost 65 million people. And I said, bro, if I can make a national hit in this country, I can make so many views that I'll probably bounce back again. And, and people from other countries like, who's this dude that got so many millions? Because I, I was seeing that Colombians will have a one hit in Medellin and they will have 25 million views. And I'm talking about 2013, 2012, when having 24 million views was not really something that you will see. Yeah, for sure. So I said, Bro, imagine if I have a national hit, bro. That's what happened. I started. I did five number one hits in Colombia, and for those five number one hits, started making uh, millions of views. And I, my career, I, I did a comeback. So, obviously, when I do this comeback, I meet my manager Juan Diego Medina, one of the best managers in the industry. Uh, he wasn't a manager. He, he he lied to me the whole time from the beginning because he, so he said he was. Make it. He, make yeah, it yeah. He's like, yo, bro, I, bro, I got this for you. And he was working at. Uh, he was selling. Uh, I think he was selling socks and bagging groceries. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was lying. <laughs> but the dude knew how to hustle. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. he knew how to hustle, and we made it. And uh, he was the one that helped me in my comeback. Okay, so w in terms of your question, uh, when I sit down with the record label, I already had so much. Uh, my platform was so big. Yeah. Now when they when they when they sat down and were like yo well we want to give you like what are you gonna give me that I don't yeah, really crazy. have like I have everything you know what I'm saying I got my people I have my platform everything that comes out becomes automatically a hit so for you for you to make me sign with you you gotta give me something that's really worth it so that's why I took advantage of my platform and I made them you know I I I did the contract the way I wanted to yeah it was Good. advantageous to you in, in any yeah. creative industry if you're someone like him who can command an audience and numbers don't lie you know exactly. you have to respect the numbers at the end of the day the platform or the partner that you're working with should be working for you or providing value to you and it sounds like you demanded that after you I guess figured out that hack that is and I'm not going to use the word niche but you realize that if you could activate a culture that you can't ignore that, right? Exactly. And and I'm sure the label saw that and then and then wanted to expand your horizons. Yeah, because the label at the same time was changed. The, the whole music industry was changing, so they were like, "Yeah, shit, we got to change too." Yeah, and we liked the way we was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, I don't though. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the way you guys was. I want to I want to change this shit because we I have my own platform. And the reality is, when my managers wanted me to sign with the record label, no disrespect to my record label because they really good with me. Um, I was like, I don't want to sign with a record label for what? I'm making my own money. Um, you know, I got all these views. Um, I'm traveling the world. I'm doing like what? What? What are they? But I do. You do need a record label. You know what I'm saying? Then I realized because they have, they work a lot for you. They do a lot for you, and um, and yeah, and and that thank thank God of all those views that I that I had in YouTube and 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 my platform was uh being so big, um, it got me the deal. You might want to go to Nikki's next show. So good news. Today's sponsor, SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more. Nikki's one of the greatest artists of all time, so catch his show. They put all the tickets from across the web in one place to make sure you're getting a good deal. Each ticket is graded to make sure you're getting a good deal. Look for the green dots. Green means good. Red means bad. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee. And SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps and you know i got you guys so use my code logan for 20 dollars off tickets at SeatGeek. that's 20 dollars off your first purchase with the promo code logan make sure you click the link in the description to download the app shout out SeatGeek. now back to the show you were definitely one of the first i guess people to utilize the internet in that way no yeah i was i could say i was one of the first influencers on instagram <laughs> i ain't lying bro. i was crazy, a, i was man. the first one when i saw that they had a video Remember, it was 10 seconds before it was 15. It was 15, 15. It was 15 seconds. I said, Oh, these people are gonna know who the fuck I am because <laughs> I was, I, I was, I have a crazy, I'm, I'm funny, I'm crazy, I'm, I'm ridiculous, I don't care, I'm, I'm so organic. So, I, I, I wanted people to see that they only saw like the pictures, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. But they didn't know who the fuck I was. So when I saw that I had a video for that shit, I was every fucking, I would make fun of everybody in the street. I would show videos. <laughs> if I bought a, my first Mercedes again, because I had I was doing a comeback, people know it was a comeback. Yeah. It was like, yo, I just bought again a Mercedes. That was the car I had when I was fucked up and I got it again. People connected to me automatically. Sure. The problem is when you become so big and you make a lot of money, it's really hard to connect with people on social media. Um, the way the Spanish people take it. Because I don't know the American way, but Spanish people, like, you showing what you have. Elaborate. They see it, they see it like you're, 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 getting, you're cocky. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you changed. Yeah, you're you like, changed. you can't, like, making a, I'm sorry, making, it, it was different for me making a video like, hey, you know, I'm walking here showing people where I'm from, blah, 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 or look at this car I just bought, I'm happy, or I just made it from, hey, I'm here in my mansion. But they don't appreciate the growth? They appreciate it, but once you there, it's like shut the fuck up. It's kind of like shut yeah, up, yeah. We fucking know you. <laughs> we fucking know you're rich, okay? Like, uh, okay. so it's like you gotta know. I'm not saying you can't do it, but you gotta know how to do it. You gotta stay relatable it, to the people always, and it stops being organic because yeah, yeah. now you gotta work to make a video that's almost not showing your lifestyle. Mm. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I totally like, get what you're saying, dude. I went through, I went through the same thing. I used to, sh <laughs> I used to show off every cool thing that I bought. Okay, and then. My fans got annoyed of it. Like, <laughs> there you go. Hey, we get it. Dog. There you go. You, you, so it's hard. You made your money. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. It's hard. We don't care about your cars anymore. <laughs> my mentality is for, and, and uh, there's a way I say it in Spanish. I don't know how to say it in English, but. Um, we speak Spanish, by the way. Yeah. You can say okay. it in Spanish. En español, yo lo digo, yo tengo un mensaje que dice, para, para, el, eh, para el resentido es presumir, pero para. El soñador es inspiración. Mm. People you know? resent you when you show off what you have, but when it, you no, don't, they love you. No, I just no, 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 you, you're gonna you're gonna see the picture the way you have to. I just watched the Conor McGregor series on, yeah, the, on Netflix. I saw it too. And in episode three, he said almost exactly what you're saying right now. He said something about how how he he's achieved his dreams. He has all these things. He's he doesn't give a fuck. He's proud of all of it. And there are two types of ways people are gonna look at it. One is the person who's gonna be inspired because Conor, you know, like you, like he came from 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 nothing and he made it a life for himself and became a leg, uh, an icon exactly. and, and secured his legacy. Or there's going to be the other type of person who has that feeling of inadequacy in them and they want to bring him down because they don't have what he has. It, even in terms of the optimism and the uh, impenetrable belief in himself. 100%. And, and so, by the way, 90% of the, are the latter nowadays. Everybody wants to tear each other why down. Why is nowadays. that? You know? Why is that? Nicky because it's e it's easier. It's easier. It feels good for them. Yeah. You know, I don't know because the reality of everything is it's crazy. It's like every time a singer comes out or anybody that's in the business comes out hustling from the beginning, like what you said and and, and your story, because we all came from nothing. Everybody's like, everybody's like, yeah, we fucking love you. We are happy and shit. But once you made that motherfucker, it's like they looking for the other guy. That's starting again. But you said it. You got to switch it up a little bit in a way that's still organic to your lifestyle. It's hard as fuck. Yeah, because you're living, you're living the best you ever have now. Yeah, it, it's but like, you got <laughs> to come bring yourself back down to I'm playing with my dog. That's yeah. the content now. <laughs> oh, they probably want you to be sad and uh, be sad on Instagram and yeah. say, hey, you know, I'm going through this shit. And like, oh, look, he's a normal guy. He's still normal. What, what do you think the ratio uh, is of people who are inspired by successful people? versus people who resent successful people. Racial is what, I'm sorry, that, like, that word. Like like fit like uh fifty fifty or like eighty oh, eighty twenty. What yeah, what's the percentage of like people who wanna believe oh. in what they're seeing or people who wanna tear people down? I think it's more people want to tear you down. Sucks. I hate that. I think it's 90-10, bro. I, hate I that. think That's so. That's probably my guess. I think so. Because who, we're going to be real, in this type of world we live in right now, you're going to say there's more people with good men, uh, mental health and people. Hell no. Than, no. Hell no. Nah, the fucking world's crazy right now. I'm not saying there, there's not good people and people that want, there's a lot of good people and there's a lot of people that, that you know, have a good energy about everything. But, bro, the world's fucking sinking right now. Well, it also, it's like, it's, it's so doggy dog. So if you're down, your mentality is if he's up, I got to get over him too. 
So, exactly. so in your mind, you're like, if he goes down, that's one less person I got to get by on my way to having what he has. You know what I'm saying? And so it's easier to start pulling down, pulling down, pulling down buildings as opposed to building up. But the funny thing is, is when you look at anybody that has any type of real meaningful success, those people never talk sh like they didn't talk shit. The majority of them didn't talk. Like, did you ever you, feel you, like that? You ever you ever leave a negative comment on a YouTube video? <laughs> No, never. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, this you'll just never. Me, <laughs> I, I have never done it, and I don't. I, I, I just can't. I, I'll, to be honest, I'll be scared to. Really? And I'm not scared of people. No, I've just. I, I feel like I feel. I, I, I just, bad vibes. I feel like what the fuck am I? Yeah, there's bad yeah. energy. Karma. It I don't feel good you about. You believe it. in karma? I was. I, I, was, I, I was. I was 11 years old once, uh, and this was when <laughs> YouTube was first coming up. I was a big YouTube fan, that's so why I started making YouTube videos. And I remember seeing this video, um, and I. And I, and I didn't like something about it. So I went to the comment section and I typed out a hate message <laughs> and I pressed enter and they posted. And I sat there looking at this comment that I had just posted and I went, oh, 11, oh my God, I'm a hater. I'm like an actual hater. Like that came from my heart. And then I had to do some like self-discovery. Like where did that come from <laughs> and, and why? But you never, you didn't know you had that in you or what? <laughs> I didn't even think about it. Like I didn't even. Well, you're 11 years old. I know, but still, I didn't even think twice about it. And I don't, I don't think people are conscious enough to realize what they're actually doing and what kind of impact it can have. It's true. There's a ripple effect with that uh, effect with that negativity. And even as an 11 year old, I, I I recognized it. But people go can go their whole lives not having that level of consciousness. I'd like to believe that because of social media. And the connectedness of the world, I have a theory that the emotional intelligence of humanity is slowly rising just a little bit, just yeah. a little bit. There's some obviously negative effect, effects inside uh, effects of social media, but I think in general, people are becoming a little bit wiser. And I think the collective <laughs> consciousness. I think I mean you are on the opposite no, end of the spectrum. I think so. I think, one, I think you I just think have access to so much information and 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 stories. Yeah, and but, people and are going to listen to this. Dude, people are going to listen to this podcast, hear your story, and be like, "Damn, there's going to be there's going to be an eight year old who listens to this podcast is inspired by you and becomes the next Nikki Jam." Like exactly, these things are happening because of the conversation that we're having. So, I'm glad that social media exists because of that reason. Oh, me too. You, you got to have a balance and, too. and a healthy relationship. It's really crazy it. though. You know, you just got to be, you, you got to be smart about it. I don't, I don't let it affect me, but I'd be saying that and then somebody will write something and I'll be fucking pissed. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm yeah, gonna yeah. fuck you up. <laughs> I, I get really fucking mad. Like yesterday I, I did a dance with these guys. Where my, we have a new song. It's really killing the game I right saw, now. Saw. And we did a little dance and shit and obviously we dance horrible as fuck. And this guy said, uh, I don't want to say nothing, but you guys look stupid, and I and I don't know why I fucking answered. And you're a fucking nerd. They, he, had, he, had, he had like glasses. You it, responded. It was yeah, and it was a stupid and it was stupid you, response. You too. call him a nerd. I call him a fucking nerd, and I, then I put the emoji of the nerd and everything. And then the funny thing is, he, I, for some reason, what you comment on Instagram goes to direct message or something. I don't know. Okay. And dude's like, I fucking love you. No, oh always, my god, that's always, that. always what that. happens, bro. They just want attention. Yeah, they dude. want to get like, your attention. And, I'm, and then I, I took it out. <laughs> oh, you deleted <laughs> you're, you're it. You're not a nerd, bro. <laughs> I erased it. No, no, no. I just laughed and I'm like, this mother. Oh, he made himself look stupid because he commented some bad shit and then yeah. he's like, I yeah, love yeah, you. Yeah. But probably ninety percent of these motherfuckers love you and they just try to act like they hate you. But we know. just we we as humans, we just want some validation. We just want some validation. Yeah, even, if you're not getting it home, maybe I'll try the comment section. Maybe I'll leave a negative comment. It'll get some likes. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's where we're at. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. I mean, hey, we are human. Have you ever had a comment that you want to fucking win off or Doug, something? Doug, when, <laughs> when I was in college making vines, I had real bad acne. And there was one guy who would make so many different accounts and comment, <laughs> you look like a burn victim. It looks like you've been thrown in a fire because I had bad acne and it, and it, and it, it really Where got to me he got it, this? It, no people are creative man oh they're so God. clever with their insults Holy now it hurts shit. it hurts <laughs> but yeah man it's it, the comments used to get me get to me i have pretty i have iron skin right now now I, I have had to get to this place but it's it's tough to get through now when i see when i see those comments now though like i don't even they don't even hit me the same way because i always think about that person 
Like I, I've gotten to this kind of like elevated like place of thought on on people like that. Like if somebody's leaving a comment like that, what does it say about them as a human? If someone if someone's calling you a burn victim because you have acne, well, that's like can you up. like you have to you have to really step back and put yourself in their shoes for a second and say like, can you imagine what this person is actually it's, going it's, through it's in empathy. their fucking life? It's, it's you know what I'm saying? To say some shit like that. But yeah. like he like he said, anyways. Everybody's looking for validation. You got massive validation oh, yeah, from yeah, a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From, we was, we're from talking a man about the bad Daddy part. That I got a lot of love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, People yeah. love me for sure. And I, I could say I, I be sometimes I look at Instagrams of other singers that come from my music and bro, they love me. Like I, I don't. They don't write shit to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like people love me, but still, you know, I think you get to an age too. I'm 42 years old, so I'm in an age where like. I remember when I used to hear older people say, "Well, when you get older, you stop. You stop giving a fuck." about shit like that yeah and it's true it you know what i'm true, saying yeah. you know but then yesterday i read this message and i <laughs> <laughs> it brought you right back you were bagging groceries again yo. that's crazy this motherfucker like took me down like yeah, yeah, yeah. he made me go back you yeah. know what I'm saying? it's funny man shit is funny. that's a that's a light comment too you guys look stupid he didn't even say anything he didn't say anything but I, but but i got He's having mad a bad day i know i got mad really the comment is not bad i just got mad because obviously the video was like us trying to dance yeah we're not fucking dancers oh so that's that's when they get you when there's a little bit of truth to these things yeah even, even just 10 percent like, did truth you fucking see we're laughing at each other yeah, shut up yeah I'm, <laughs> shut up i can't dance I'm fucking smack you <laughs> no but what mike was saying yeah i was trying to i was trying to bring you back it was a good transition it was a good transition daddy yankee here's your music what what year is that like 98 you could say no 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 you could say 96 97 Nin okay oh let's say it was close so he so it, wh where is daddy yankee at the time that he discovers you and when you find out that he's heard your music what what was that moment like for you well you know the thing is uh daddy yankee was like in that moment he was like the king of the mixtapes you know and i was just i was a big fan you know he made I was, I've been singing since the same time Daddy Yankee was singing, but he got famous before me. So I always wanted, like, I always wanted to meet this guy. So one day I'm in a club and, and Daddy Yankee's there, but you know, those days there was no social media. There was nothing. I didn't even know how he looked for me. I thought he was like a, like a dark skinned dude or probably, you know what I'm saying? Cause in Puerto Rico, mostly the, like the, the, the best ones, none of them were white. You right. know what I'm saying? They were like more. So when I see him, I'm like, you Daddy Yankee? <laughs> Like, that's crazy, man. <laughs> I, I would have never thought he was Daddy Yankee. And, and he was like, yeah, man. I'm like, I, I heard your music before. I'm like, oh, shit. You heard my shit? Crazy. And it was like, yeah, man. I like what you do, man. I mean, because I used to, to be honest with you, I used to like sing with a, a fucked up accent, like trying to act like I was Jamaican. And people loved that shit. And they thought I was Jamaican. I was, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would do that shit. I became famous in Puerto Rico because of that shit, too. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, because in, in those days, like, dancehall music was really big. You know, Cuddy Ranks, Chubba Ranks, all these. Yeah. And uh, so I was doing that. No, 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 no. And people thought I was half Jamaican and shit. And I was just, I, I, I stuck to it. And one day, this Jamaican girl called Patra came to Puerto Rico. She was, like, the biggest one. And, and, and they told her I was half Jamaican. She was speaking Jamaican to me. I was like, shit. I was like... <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, but um, so he was like, "Yeah, you, 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 you let you Jamaican kid." I'm like, "Nah, man. I'm just, I, I just, I, I'm just pretending to be fucked Jamaican. up English. I'm not Jamaican. I'm Puerto Rican, but I do, you know, I do Spanish music too as well and shit like that." And then uh, he heard my album. Obviously, obviously, he criticized it. He said it was whack, but he said that he I have a lot of potential. And from there, that was the first time I met him. And then the second time I saw him. He was like, yo, you know what? I had a song doing really good in Puerto Rico. And he was like, yo, can you, you want to come with me to the Dominican Republic? Uh, you know, I have a show. You can, you can back me up. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's go. So it was the first time I traveled. I went with the Dominican Republic. He saw I was, a biggest, I was his biggest fan. So obviously nobody was going to be his back, better backup than me. I was performing. This, uh, it was like magic the first time we touched uh, the stage. And from there he signed me. He had his little uh, record, his, and that moment it was a small record label called the Cartel Records. He signed me, and that's when uh, the something happened in, in Puerto Rico where they, like our music was illegal. So they took it off radio. The government took it off radio and and, and stuff like that. What they were uh, breaking the CDs and Why? shit because our music was talk it was like the the word, lyrics were really strong. Talking about you know puta and similar like kind of like a hip hop crackdown. Like same same yeah, situation, yeah, 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 same yeah. situation, and uh, obviously. 
we won that, but uh, we ha we wasn't working. So Yankees are like, yo, Nicky, um, I think, you know, I know I gave you $5,000. And I'm talking about 97. He gave me $5,000 to sign with him. That's like a million dollars. Bro, <laughs> I thought I was rich like a motherfucker, yeah, man. Yeah. I went hard with those five dollars. <laughs> 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 Crackhead mode. Yeah, yeah. Hard. XD was XTC was going on that oh, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was a raver and shit. <laughs> Trance music was. Yeah, big day. It was crazy. Sick. Um. So. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, he's like, "Yo, bro, take the money and just forget it. I'm not. I can't. I can't have you on. Like, there's the mute. There's no music going on right now. It's crazy." And I'm like. You fucking crazy, bro. Forget about that. Well, let's do music, me and you. Like, let's, you know what I'm saying? Let's let's do it. Do, uh, you know, let's do, let's, yeah, let's, let's fucking, let's make it happen. And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah, man. You know what? Fuck it. Let's go. So, you know, he became like my big brother. And we started doing music. And uh, we did a lot of fucking hits in the streets, man. A whole bunch of hits. Right right now, those hits are still, they still play those fucking hits. Songs that have been from 20, 25 years. You go to any club and you're going to hear those songs. La Combi Completa, Donde Están La Gata. All those songs, man. It's, they're, they're fucking, they're legend. So then what happened? Hold for Giant Truck. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out I'm the audio guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, so then what happened that you started, I'll just say, using drugs? Well, the thing is, uh, if you see my story, uh, whenever you have a chance, you see my story on, on Netflix. Doc. You, you, but yeah, you'll see um, that it comes from my mother. My, my, mother, my mother was a drug addict. My dad was a drug addict. My, my, my uncle died of drugs in, in my house. It was like a family thing. Like it was in my blood already. Mm. So f since I was 11 years old, I was already like smoking weed and, and, and doing drugs and shit. That, but I wasn't that bad. But when I was 14 years old, I started doing cocaine. And I went crazy with cocaine. Like crazy, crazy, crazy. But uh, people didn't tell yet because I could still do shows and I was functional and yeah. I was going everywhere. Then when the ecstasy era came out, and, and, and I'm talking about 98, 99, and, I lost it. I went really, I went more crazy. And then the perks came out. Like, I started doing perks. You're trying to do everything. Every fucking thing, bro. But okay, looking back, and it's probably easier to have this conversation now. What do you think it was then that made you turn to drugs? Because I would, I would assume, right? You're you're building this lifestyle that that you always wanted to. You're, you you're, know, you're living your dream. What hole were you trying to fill? Well. I don't know, cause the reality is, um, I just think I think uh, I, I I think my mom. I didn't have my mom. I, I my mom. Um, when I went to Puerto Rico, my dad took me to Puerto Rico as a fugitive to raise us, and 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 I lost contact from my mom, and for some reason, my mom not being with me affected me, and I was really like it, it was killing me inside, and. Probably me seeing my mom do drugs and my dad do drugs and everybody in my, in, in, in my family, I saw it like some normal shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know it was something that that it was crazy. And, and the reality is, if you're doing reggae, like, you know, like hip hop, reggaeton music in those days in Puerto Rico. Part of the culture. Yeah, it was part, it yeah. was part of it. So it was normal. You know what I'm saying? And I was young as fuck. And this is the craziest thing. My dad, my uncle died of AIDS, right? Cause you know, back in the days, they would shoot heroin using people's uh, needles, yeah. needles and, and they would share the needles and he died in my face. Like I saw him like, and before he died, he told me, look at me, look at me, I'm dying right now. Don't do drugs, don't do this, don't do that. You think I listened to him? I saw him, I saw him dying, skeleton like, the worst, because back in the days with AIDS, it was, you know how it was. Yeah, Today, AIDS, AIDS, you see people at the club, they take one pill, they, they chilling. Well, that scares me a little bit. It does, but the reality, yeah, but the reality <laughs> is, today you don't know who has it. Fast. You know what I'm saying? Today, there's they, they have more medicine, that yeah. everything changed. Back in the days when that came out, it was crazy. So, you never learn by somebody else's uh, situation. You gotta go through it yourself. I you have I, to. I wouldn't, that, that's, 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 that's proof. You know, my uncle died in front of me. And I saw that, and I did everything he did, and even worse. That's crazy, man. You know? But at first, but at That's first, you're, you're recreational. You're 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 doing coke and and still going. Was it was it the pills that really brought you to a to a bad place? And is yeah. that what the what pills. led to the the because the, the pills the pills messed up my mind. You know what I'm saying? And it and I, my judgment was just whack. And I and it's funny because I became a drug addict, and I and I and I, I was a <laughs> overweight drug addict. <laughs> 
So was I, man. I could relate. Yeah. yeah. No, but there's <laughs> nothing I, worse than that. Because <laughs> at least if you're, <laughs> at least if you're skinny, you could like you know wear some nice clothes and look good. But they saw me from being like a skinny dude, like doing good, and I was always like this good looking kid. For being this butt like you're fat guy, <laughs> drug addict. Wait, you say Buzz like Out of shape, yeah. <laughs> I said it, I said it yeah, wrong, Buzz no, like yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's so funny. It's yeah. so, you're <laughs> going to, to infinity and yeah, beyond, bro. Yeah, my face was like, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Horrible. That was like swelling like this. Well, like, because the I pills. I look like a pelican, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, I don't walk and my face <laughs> move like this. The pills slow you so down, bro. The pills, you the don't form. Do yeah. It defo- no, but the perks, not even ecstasy, that the perks. No, that's like, what I mean. They yeah. slow you down. You don't do shit. You just sit around, you eat, you don't work out, you can't work out. You can't, You're fucking useless. Yeah, and it fucked me up. And it yeah. made me, it made, and then obviously my judgment was whack. My music was whack. And all the embarrassments that would happen to me going to jail and coming out, I would be going to jail for any stupid shit. Like, I heard you, know, you went to jail for leading the cops on a crazy car chase. I did too. That was one of them. Yeah. Why'd you get caught? Oh, the funny thing is, my, my sister. Enough, no, no, listen to listen to this. Uh, the car uh, I, I was behind payments for like six months. Repo. So when your car has no, but they put that like it's it's a stolen car in Puerto Rico oh, in okay. those days. It's not really like repo. It's like if you don't if you're behind payments, they'll they, they'll put it like you stole the car. So the police are trying to stop me, but they don't have like they don't have no no no. I don't see nothing. I don't see like it, there's a police car. So I just keep going and keep going, keep going. But then I see helicopters and shit and I'm trying to like hide and shit. And I'm trying not to get caught because I, I know the embarrassment that's going to come with it. And then I was in my worst days. The music industry was like, I was the embarrassment of the music industry. I had no hits. Nothing was going on with me. I was fat as fuck. It was, it was embarrassing. I had like probably like 300 perks on me <laughs> that day. And um, the, poli- the police stopped me. They, they broke my wrist. They took me to jail. What year is this? This is like 2009. Let's talk about like per 30s. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is dark. You and this, and you had already, so going back to your relationship with Daddy Yankee, you're, you, when did he realize that it it was more than just you having a good time and that you had a major problem? The whole time. He would look, when I was doing Coke, he would look at me like, that's the worst thing that could happen because he was staring at me like, and you're looking at him like that's, like, your, that's and, your guy. And I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> like, yeah, with your jaw, jaw and like crazy. Jaw, you know what I'm Because Yankee yeah, yeah, yeah. was staring at me like with that judgment. The thing, worst. Like, like, the yeah. worst. How much shame he did would, you he, feel in that moment? In that moment, I, I didn't really feel shame. You didn't give a fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I didn't give a shit. Bro. I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> but the next day. <laughs> I, was, I was really fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. so bad. That's yeah, so bad. I, was, I didn't care. <laughs> but, uh. <laughs> but the thing is, he would always tell me, like, bro, it's going to be obvious, Nikki, that your career is going to go f- you down the drain and, and, and you're going to see what's going to happen to me and it's going to affect you. And that's what really happened. He would always tell me because he didn't do drugs. He didn't fuck around at all. Did he, he drink and shit? He didn't do shit. Yeah. yeah. He was Those... like, he was straight. He was like the Michael Jordan of fucking reggaeton music. And, and right at now. the time you were probably like, that's so lame. He was you so like, whack. That's so whack. Everybody, yeah, 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 we yeah, all yeah. criticized yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, bro, we what do you do? We all criticized yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. There was more singers and they were like, oh, here comes Yankee now. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can't lie. Because every time you'll come here, like, hide the drugs, hide the drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yankee be like, and, he, and then you'll see the faces and he'll laugh. Because he'll laugh too. He'll be like, yeah. <laughs> you look at him like you look fucked up. <laughs> and he's like, bro, you hate me now, but then you're gonna, you know, understand. You'll get it. And then, bro, I, got, I fucking got it. Yeah. Well, he probably at some point had to take a different stance on it because y'all were like partners, no, right? That's, no, no. So he could laugh at everybody else, but but you probably started. For f- me, for me, it was like, yo, Nick, if it, it, it became to a moment, it was like, yo, Nikki, I can't fuck with you anymore because you're fucking up, you're irresponsible, you have street problems everywhere. I have people telling me they're gonna fucking kill you. So I need, I, I need to get my shit together. I, like, I, I really care about my fucking career and my family. I ain't going to fucking keep, you know. He tried. He tried more than four or five times to help me, bro. He tried so many times. But there's so much you could do. You know what I'm saying? I'm so, cu- I'm so curious what that moment is, that, that moment where you finally do help yourself. Because it sounds like for someone like you, for someone like Mike, there's a point where you got to look inward and make that change for you. But you know, it, 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 from you. Yeah. What was that moment for you? Because you can you can have your uncle dying in your face and telling you what not to do. He didn't give a fuck. Nothing. You could have your idol, your business partner telling you what what to do. Nothing. Nothing. So what was the moment where you realized I got to change my behavior? 
the moment was when I uh, I went to a, I had to go to Columbia again and do a couple of shows and and I was happy because I was doing shows you know even in that bad moment I was doing a couple of more shows in Colombia. Uh, I stopped at a church. I stopped at a church, and for some reason I felt that I had to go into the church. I went inside and uh, and 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 the, the preacher was you know he was doing his thing he was preaching, and and he and and he would talk and he would say I know you're here and I know why you uh, what you're here for. He would say something like that and then keep talking. And then I'm like, and then he's, he kept he kept preaching, he kept preaching. He's like, are you gonna are you gonna you know come through? Like come come down here. I'm waiting for you. So I knew he was talking to me. And I just went, I went to him, I got on my knees, and I started crying. I swear I cried like for 30 minutes. Cause I cried about everything that went through my life. My uncle, my dad, my mom. Uh, my situations, the the things that I saw in the hood, everything, all the bad things that I had inside me, I just let it out. And then after that, then you know I, I started having a connection with God. And I remember that the next day I said, God, I'm gonna ask you for something, you know. And it's and it's crazy, but I know I have so much talent, and there's so many artists out there that don't have what I have, and I don't understand why I'm not there. And I felt that God told me. You want to get there? I'm going to give you everything you want. Because I know that's not what you really need, but I'm going to give it to you. Just give me something. Get off drugs. I felt that he told me he wanted me to stop, and I stopped. And I swear to God, I stopped. I shouldn't swear, but I, I stopped. And everything in my life changed automatically. Grammys, World Cup, movies, every fucking thing. So he gave me what I wanted. I gotta give him a lot. Was I it, owe him a lot. Was that before? Was that before or after the the overdose in 2010? Was that it had to have been after? That was after. Got it. That was after. And, and also after. But that was that. Like, that was in that same time. time that, same time, time frame. Yeah. And also after, I wanted to ask you about this. Uh, last last thing on Daddy Yankee before you know after you guys kind of had this this split up, he put out a track that had kind of a scathing lyric towards you. Oh, because I did too. Yeah, I, you did, guys I, had, I did it first. And you guys had this little back and forth. I wanted to just ask you, have you guys closed the loop on that? And oh, yeah. So you don't have any bad feelings no, towards No, 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 no. When I came back, when, the thing, you got to see, for, for Yankee, he never wanted anything but bad for me. He wanted me to of come course, back. When I, when, I, when, I, when I, The reason why I hit him on a song was because I felt he had to be more there, but he really, he really didn't. You know what I'm saying? That was that street mentality, like, yo, you gotta be with your homie. And uh, to the, nah, bro, like, he, he tried 50 times. Yeah. So I was stupid and I was ignorant. That's why I hit him on a song. So he, you know, he hit me a little bit back, but he didn't really have to hit me on a song. The reality is, he came out with his biggest hit, Gasolina, and it, came, it became so big that after that, nobody was even looking at me anymore. You know? So when I, when I do a comeback, the first person who's happy is him. Yeah. Mm. Cause he would have never thought, you know what I'm saying? He knew the talent that I had. He knew I was, I, my lyrics was crazy. He knew I could sing. He knew I, he knew I was very versatile in the music, but uh, he's like, is he gonna leave this black, you know what I'm saying? This drug thing, energy behind and I did. So for him, he was really happy. And then we did, we did collabs in that moment. And yeah, we yeah. talked and, we, and, we, and we, we hugged each other as brothers. And, and today we don't have the same relationship that we had before. Because the reality is it's two big icons working and doing their things. But, you know, we hit, we hit each other on Instagram, That's on good. DM, on WhatsApp, whatever we can. Obviously, it's, it was so many years apart. So we don't have the same relationship, but we cool. We have no problem. If I call him right now and say, yo, I got this track, let's, he's like, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's that, 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 that type of relationship. You definitely got to also be grateful for him attempting, right, to, to, to pull you out. I mean, he sounds like a, like a great guy he and, is. and a great partner. He is, mentor. 100%. He's my brother, man. I got only love for him. Love, respect, and he always been my guy. Sometimes I'm going to fuck up and I'm like, what would Yankee do in this situation? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's funny, it's funny, dude. Like, uh, not to compare, but me and my brother, like, a, a, he's my fucking brother, yeah. also made diss tracks on each other because we were in that phase of our life yeah. where, like, you know, uh, we were just arrogant at the time, and one person would take a little dig, and the other person would take a bit bigger, uh, bigger dig back, and we just 
built this uh, infrastructure for a real volatile relationship for brothers, and then it made the relationship stronger for both of us oh, in the end. Man, but boys. we had to we had to real really trudge through that mud for a while. I loved what you said earlier. That was that was that was that was beautiful. The the moment that you had with God. Yeah. Are you still are you still you still have a relationship with God? A hundred percent. Do you identify uh, with a particular religion, or is it just an overall connectedness? Nah, to I just I just have my connection with God. I, probably it's not the right way. Probably I would have to be, uh, you know, in a in a church with a religion. I don't know what's the right way, but I think the right way for me is to be connected with God. I don't know if there is a right way, which is why I like what, what you said. Like, I I too have a relationship with God. I pray every night. Yeah. I don't identify with a particular religion. I don't think there's a right way to do it. I'm the same. God is love. David Blaine was just on our podcast. He said that, and and it's really cool that, I mean, that that moment right there for you, that pivot is a perfect example of how powerful a relationship or a belief in, in, in something a higher being can be. And for that reason, it's, it's so cool. But it did is. you, did you stop like stop cold Turkey after that moment? I, I, I got locked up in a room, my dad outside. Locked up. Don't let me out for four days. Oh, you put yourself through a I through a go. detox. What, was, sell, your, what was your date? Your clean date. Do you remember by any chance the day you got clean? Because, dude, our it's I, I hate saying this because it's always so weird. I'll never say this to a guest, but our stories are actually ridiculously real similar. Close. He blew up to three hundred plus pounds I was, as well. I was almost three hundred pounds, okay. and I, I was me a drug too. addict for ten, not, not nine plus years. Uh, okay. Oxycontin, heroin, you know, crack, uh, the whole nine. And I got clean in two thousand ten while probably wearing all black, just like you, to try to <laughs> stay <laughs> slim, say, which I still do. That's crazy. To be completely honest, even if we, <laughs> no, the funny thing is, even if you get skinny, we, we still. Yeah, wear black. It stays in you. It, it stays fucks in up your mind. Like, do I, do you think I can, wear? can I wear white? Can now? I wear white? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I wear black. That's crazy. Now nah, you ripped, bro. Come yeah, on, man. Dude, stop, Get out of here, bro. Stop. You're not like us. If bro. I was like you, I would have been with no shirt on in the mall yeah, right now. All shirt. white. Give me everything but a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then, uh, since then. Have you dabbled at all, or are you cut that shit out completely? Oh no, I don't fuck around with drugs. No way, it was a touch cold it. turkey I drink, moment. Yeah, yeah, I drink, yeah. but drink alcohol was never my problem. Mm -hmm. Drugs was my problem, so you, I have no drugs at all. I don't even look at it. I don't mm. care because you know what happened to me when you say the overdose wasn't really an overdose. I had a I had a a brain problem. You know the the uh, the what makes your body body moves. Yeah. Something was affecting that. Something that I did with the drugs affected. Like for me to pick up this thing, I had to like your your, your motor problems. My motor yeah. problems. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's that system called again? Your motor system? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I want the word. Otherwise, I can't continue the show. It's a your. Can we pause neuro, the show? Neuro can we pause the show real quick so we get this word for what's Mike? that? No, it is motor. It's something motor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but what's that function? system that controls that? There's like oh, a, what's the part of the, the brain? Damn, we're not that yeah, smart. Yeah, no, it's such an easy answer. Somebody the in this room, somebody in this room should have the answer. Shit. No, but but it 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 got affected. So another thing is, if I would have done drugs again, probably I would have been in a fucking. It would have fucked you up. You know, you know what the the weirdest thing I read was when you started thinking about getting clean and, and getting out of the out of like that that world, you went to Colombia. <laughs> I, I thought because, it was funny bro, too. Bro, I thought bro, it was funny imagine too. somebody was like, yo, today's the day I give up pasta and they moved to Florence, Italy. No, no, you know what I'm saying? Like, wait, you're wait, like, wait, bro, but let me clear you something went up. to Medellin. Yeah. Like, dude. Let me, like, dude, let me clear something. Capital of the world. <laughs> let me clear something up. When I went to Colombia, I yeah, partied like crazy. For sure. And I went crazy. But, what happened to me happened in Colombia. Right. And that's why I got cleaned in Colombia. I know everybody here is like, you went to Colombia and you got cleaned? It, it wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, I'm going to put myself to the test. It wasn't test. easy, but my mentality is I started like not partying. So I was living in, because Colombia is a good place to Gold, live. Beautiful. Medellin is just yeah, yeah, so yeah. beautiful. And I feel good. I didn't feel people judging me. I didn't have all those demons. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like everybody was like, and and everything you need in Colombia with so little money, you could live like a king. Yeah. You know, so I was like taking care of myself, getting skinny, eating healthy, uh, preparing myself for for what for my comeback in the music. And the reality is I felt so good. The country gave me so much. You know, Colombia gave me so much love. So I was looking and I was I was looking to a whole different Colombia. 
Yeah. I got there and I saw the crazy Colombia, but I saw the beautiful Colombia that a lot of people don't know about. And they should because the culture is inc incredible. People will stop doing whatever they're doing just to take care of you. You can ask anybody like, yo, where where can I get to a, a place? I, hey, they, they'll go and they'll, you don't see that shit don't over here. You, yeah. People, that's very, you don't see, that's not the mentality and the love they give you. So I feel like I was, I feel like Colombia was my grandmother, you know, mm. in that moment. I feel like Colombia was like God. And grabbing your hand. Helping yeah, me yeah. and giving me everything I needed. So I that black, that dark part of Colombia that every country has, because I'm not going to say country, you know, I, Every country has that dark for part. For sure. Uh, just made that comeback way easier for me. They made me feel like I had a backup. And the reality is they did back me up because all those people that were viewing my, 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 my shit by YouTube and all that, that made me have a, a platform so big that I was this bigger artist that people like, wait a minute, why Nicky Jam is so big? I we don't get it. I yeah. mean, he's, like, he's only big in Colombia. Well, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I and get it twisted. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, I was I was kidding, right? Colombia, beautiful, beautiful country, so much to offer. And, and one thing has to offer, also very beautiful women. Oh, and I very, wanted to very, ask you, yeah, if your addictions have manifested themselves <laughs> elsewhere, because I dealt with this problem. A little no, bit no, 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 no. They did, and they <laughs> always do, bro. Because I'm, you know, what? I'm not. Hey, I said I stopped drugs. I didn't say I stopped fucking around. <laughs> Well, well, I want to ask you this. I want to ask you this real quick. Yeah. Um, I, I had this girlfriend, bro. Right. Yeah. Oh shit. And, is this gonna, and, is this gonna be this type of interview. Yeah, and, and occasionally, like, she would be like, you know, we get in a little argument, or whatever. She'd be like, Oh yeah, look who the fuck is in my DMs, bro. <laughs> And I swear to God, you were in there, bro. I was there? I swear to God, bro, you were in there. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, damn, But it bro. wasn't only me, right? <laughs> no, hell no. Okay, okay, okay. Hell okay, no, okay. Lil Wayne was in there. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking a bunch of NBA players okay, were okay, in there. Okay, 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 okay. That makes me feel normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was Lana Rhodes. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's like, really? You dated Lana Rhodes? <laughs> no, really? She really yeah, offered she, surprise. No, you. I was surprised that she was uh, she was bragging because of me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, That's damn, crazy. bro, I know that dude. That's, That's crazy. Oh shit. So hey, my question, building off of that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, is yeah. like, what's your I'm deal? Sorry, by the way, nah, bro, I'm, I'm fucking around. This <laughs> funny. I'm using That's it as a segue. Uh, do, <laughs> What what's your what's your deal there? Like, do, have you have you ever wanted to settle down? Did you ever settle down? No, yeah, like, no, 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 no. When I'm like, in a relationship, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mess around. Yeah, because you had that one. But I, but I but I but I be breaking up and I go crazy <laughs> yeah. and I have like a whole year of just craziness. And and and, and my, I have a girlfriend right now. She knows this. Like she knows when I'm. She asked me like you like and I really because I think I fuck around so much. Then when I'm in a relationship, I'm like hiding away from that. Yeah. Mm. But when I'm single, it's a rat. I'll be like, hey, what's up, baby? <laughs> yeah, I mean, bro, bro, you're you're definitely at a high in your career for sure. You say you're 42, but I don't believe you. I don't yeah, you I don't believe great. you. I simply do yeah, not yeah, believe I think yeah, the yeah. Drugs <laughs> preserve, I think the drugs preserve you. Dude. They help me. Right? I'm not gonna lie, way. bro. You, uh, dude, like Bro, it's crazy. You, it's crazy. It's, like, it's almost like pet getting petrified, like petrified wood, <laughs> but like <laughs> <by> crack. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like as weird as that sounds, bro. <laughs> this guy's <laughs> crazy. No, yeah, you, you look you look like 29, bro. I imagine when you're single, you're you're slaying. And then and, and then also Miami, be, be, being the king of, of Latin pop culture. I imagine you oh, see a no, girl no, you no. like. It's... Girls love me, bro. They love me. Yeah, yeah. They love me because you know I just. I, I you got just... you got Riz, dude. Yeah. Do you, you know what? what that? Do you know what that means? I got what? Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> dude. He shouldn't have said that. Is it bad? I'm sorry about that, no. Nikki Jam. Oh, it's I, like I, a, you got Riz. It's goes, like a TikTok yeah. term, dude. You, you, it just means you got game. Type ah, shit. I appreciate yeah, that, man. Yeah, it's it's a it's short for charisma. Oh yeah, Riz, Riz. And I'll be honest with you. That is the first time it's ever exited my mouth. It really I, might I too, be. It I might too be. wanted to be hip, because the kids on TikTok are saying it. So I tried it out there, and it kind of worked. You got Riz. You got Riz, bro. Yeah, you got it too, man. I got. Uh, you got it too. You think you don't think you have it? Got a hot Danish girlfriend. You so do. maybe I do have some Riz. Come on, man. Got, <laughs> maybe I got a little Riz. Yeah, you your shit going on, man. Yeah, no, no, no. So okay, so listen. The World Cup song yeah. was a massive, massive. I mean, the World Cup's the biggest event 
ever. We went this year. It was incredible this this World Cup this past year. Um, was there was there was there some sort of like uh, conversation around the negative something around that song? The song didn't work as a hit. Like let's say Shakira's song. Shakira's song for the World Cup was a hit. My song wasn't a hit. I'm not gonna lie. But for me, it was more than that. You know what I'm saying? For me, it was like I'm I'm performing at the World Cup. That's insane. Yeah, nice. You know, and I'm and 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 listen to this. Not only that, the song got me the part on Bad Boys because Will Smith never been in 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 a performing in the World Cup. So I said, if I get him in the World Cup. I could probably tell him, hey, that's, a up, that's a favor. That's yeah. one favor. You know what I'm saying? Hey, what's, yo, you know, we're coming. You think you get me in that new movie you're yeah. doing? And the bad boy thing? Yeah. What's up? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, you got to cast. You got to do the casting, though. I'm like, shit. Okay. <laughs> I did it. And I got the part. But uh, so it helped me. That you know, It helped me there. And and just just doing a World Cup with Will Smith. Is that is, can, a lot of people say shit like that? <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. It's, 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 it's huge. Bro. It's hard to it's hard Massive. to manufacture a hit. I, f I feel like I feel like a lot of hits, maybe accidental isn't the right word, but to try to make a song that's as good as like you want it to be to yeah. like to make a hit. Well, the thing is, this song it wasn't my song. This song was already it's done. Like, it's handed and to they you. they said you if you want to do the World Cup, you have to sing this song. Yeah. If they would have told me sit down and write a song for the World Cup, I knew it was gonna be way better. Uh, okay. Because in that moment I was on fire, you know what I'm saying. And everything I had in mind, like everything that come out was was you know was just it was crazy. But am I gonna say no to the World Cup? No. I think Quavo wrote the song actually. That's crazy. Oh wow. Oh yeah. Quavo wrote the song and he did a good job because that's not even trap music or rap music. It's it's a different vibe. It's kind of like a Jamaican. You know, one on live it up if you don't live like yeah. Yeah. Well, so, Jamaican, so, that's yeah. your background, right? Like yeah, you're from yeah, Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. For me it's easy. Well, yeah, I'm half Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> I'm half Jamaican. You have ADD? Yeah. Diagnosed? No. Self diagnosed. Yeah. I think I have it too. I wanted to ask. You think that's contributed to your success? I think so. Uh, I mean, everybody I just think that I'm thinking about fifty things and, and it's you know and I could sit here with you guys and I'm thinking about what I'm gonna do after yeah. or, or stuff like that. I I, re I, re I realize you had it, but actually, <laughs> I always when I saw you on social media, I always like felt that that you had ADD. Uh, yeah. 100%. That's my, was my first thought when I saw oh, when I saw you. But when you came here, when you came, a hundred percent, that's just motherfucking crazy. Sure, but when I met you, it's like oh, he controlled his ADD really good today because yeah. like you was on this, like you know what I'm saying, yeah. like yeah. But but I but I see I see I see a lot of me. You <laughs> That was my first impression of that right. too. Bro. I was like, bro, something's wrong with, <laughs> with this dude. For no, sure, no, no, bro. no. See, that's for the sure. stigma. Mike, but don't it. tell me, bro. I got everything. Like, I feel like I can I, say whatever the fuck like, I want. I, like, I feel like he he could be, he could be visiting you, and, and he's the kind of guy that he, he can't wait to get the fuck out of the house. Like, he's like, he's like, don't yeah, yeah, bro. All my friends are are getting gassed up right now. That's me. That's me. A hundred percent, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you want to leave right now? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. But I, I want to leave right now. <laughs> I know. Oh, I know. I, I want to go home. I know. I know. I know. No, I'm just kidding. But wait, ADD this is, this is or ADHD? Because like for me, like I'll be like when I dapped you up earlier, like I seen like a basketball roll by, and I was like, ooh, a basketball. You know what I'm saying? Like, did your <laughs> like I feel like ADD and ADHD are, are different. Oh, I'm yeah, not an are. expert on this shit by any means, but I I think I have both probably. <laughs> you have you know both. what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. I you know I walked in. It's not 9:30 a.m. You were playing basketball. Yeah. Like you definitely, you definitely have it, but that's why I ask. I think <laughs> my age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is that the diagnosis now? Oh, he played. He played basketball. You got ADD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I mean, hey, look, I, I had. I'm just crazy. I can't stay still. No, that's good though. That's, I cannot stay that's still. That's great. When you were a kid, was that an issue? Were your parents yeah. like, "Oh, this kid's a tornado. We got, we got to rile him up, bro, bro, tone him down." Bro, I was always in fucking trouble, man. Because of that, I can't, I couldn't stop, man. I was. I remember I was really poor. And we didn't have like like the jeans were like broken and shit like that. It's a funny story, bro. And I was the teacher was getting a class and I was playing with my with my pee pee because I had no I had my they were broke. It was just was out. Just, and I, it was out. Yeah. It was out. Just playing my shit. Yeah, do, 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 been do, do, there. Been there. Done the that. teacher's looking at me like, what the fuck? You're like I got ADD. What do you want? What do you want to say? 
<laughs> you know? <laughs> It's not my fault, bro. This is my diagnosis. You know what's funny? I play basketball this in the morning. This story got nothing to do with ADD. <laughs> yeah, dude. You're like, dude. I'm so I'm sorry. I'm just saying I can't concentrate in there. I just got to do what the fuck I got to do. That's what I was going to do. I got ADD. Yeah, I can't I, concentrate. I got to play I, with my dick I, quick, bro. Exactly. God yeah. damn, bro. Yeah. Look at his face. <laughs> He's like, oh, Look shit. Look at his hair. Look at his hair. <laughs> That is that is funny. <laughs> it's fucking crazy, man. Dude, uh, can we can we stick with the music for a second? Because Latin uh, music, bro, reggaeton, it's whatever you want to call it, no, ha but has been, and and it's just crazy. And now you see, like, do you, one, what was the American crossover like for you? What was it like to see this uh, this genre that was so important to you and to your people become a part of you know the greater culture and 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 to be accepted by everybody and also are you staying up to date on the new artists are you you know listening yeah. to the peso pluma and all, all everything that everything 100 yeah, yeah. i'm yeah. really happy well the thing is this is something that for me is really important i was the you could say i'm one of the architects of this music absolutely so i started knocking doors for this music to be where it is today so for me to still be here and still be you know one of the singers that that's relevant in the music and to see what's Go, I feel like a like a like a proud father, because I really you know I worked with me, Daddy Yankee, and a whole bunch of other artists that I can't take credit from. I will never finish saying their names because there's a whole bunch from the old school that that we did a lot for, to see where it is now, and to, to us to see what Bad Bunny's doing, and to see what Osuna's doing, and 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 everybody else from our right. genre of music. Because I can't say Peso Pluma because what he really sings is more like you know you Mexican yeah, for music, sure, for sure. But like reggaeton yeah. music, like to see all, all these artists and what's going on. I mean, he's like, wow, bro, this is, what, this is what I dreamed about. This is what we wanted. You know what I'm saying? We used to see the hip-hop artists doing what they were doing. We're like, one day we're going to be like that. Mm. And people were laugh in our face. Like, yeah. what? It's crazy. That? Look at us. I mean, you know, Jay Bobby's doing sneakers with Michael Jordan. You know, I, I, did, I did my watch uh, uh, with Hugh Blow. I can, you know, I did my, that's crazy. Like, for me, it, it's crazy to see that we're doing all these crazy collaborations. I can't compare my Hugh Blow collaboration <laughs> with Jordan. <laughs> Thank you. No. Bro, it's still, it's, it's big, bro. No, no, no it's Jordan's big. It's it's Jordan's big. Yeah, I wanted that one. It's, yeah, it's, it's fine, it's fine. We'll get it next time. We'll yeah, next yeah. Time. But um, <laughs> what I'm saying is it's just, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, all these collaborations that would never happen 10 years ago, 15 years ago. To see what's going on today, man, I'm just, I'm proud. I'm proud of my people. I'm proud of the Latin people. I'm, I'm proud of my culture. I'm proud of reggaeton music. I'm just, I'm just proud. It makes me happy to hear that you're proud and don't have any resentment or ill will towards the up and comers. Nah. Being, Cause it's, I mean, it sometimes happens, man. I, I'm sure maybe people you, you have idolized, you know, they, they're. Yeah. You don't feel the respect probably yeah, sometimes. They make it out of the limelight. But you, you gotta You're think, not doing it like they did it. So they don't mm. have the respect for it. Yeah. It, well, the reality is I, I'm not going to lie. There's been artists that, that they're popping right now. I'm not going to mention names that probably the respect wasn't the best respect. Cause, uh, we was brought up differently, you know what I'm saying? Like if we had, like let's say Vico C, he's one of the old school cats, like he, he's the legend. He's like the, the one that started this whole movement in the Spanish. Till this day, I'll see him and I'll bow down, you know what I'm saying? Cause the, I was raised like that. I was like, yo bro, that's the OG right there. You're like, you, mm. I don't feel that today in today's generation, but I understand how the new generation is. So I don't get it. I don't get personal with it. You know what I'm saying? I don't get mad if somebody doesn't respect me the way I should. Man, they fuck should. that. I get mad for you, bro. I, I don't <clears> think, yeah. Because I, I was reading how, like, Jay was, like, a big influence on you. And he was, he was like, everything for me. And, like, I, I know the blueprint. And, like, for me, it was, like, Reasonable Doubt, Volume yeah, 1, yeah. all that shit. Reasonable Doubt. And, crazy. and crazy, right? And those dudes always paid, uh, you know, homage to KRS-One and, and, and all those guys from New York back in the day. And it's, like, I hate that the same shit doesn't happen now for the new school. They look at they look at their predecessors as old heads. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and don't and don't understand and pay respect to the fact that without them like you you're you ain't shit. Like you don't exist. You don't yeah. have a life. You have no career. You have nothing. You know what I'm saying? So like for me like I, I I'm more in the school that, that you're at where it's like dude, I got to look at the people that came before me and be like, "Yo, those are those are that's everything." Like this dude paving the the route for, for social media creators so that I could do what I do is like, bro, I'll always look at him as one of the goats. You know what I'm saying? And he's That's got people up. that he looks at as, as the goats. That's what's you up. know what I'm saying? So the, yeah, I don't know. I, I agree, with you. I shit, agree with you, but my mentality <clears throat> is I can't expect everybody to have, 
I can't for sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't they, they don't make them, they don't em. make them like us anymore. Facts. So I'm not mad at that. <laughs> I'd rather so true. I'd rather be one of the few. You know, and people say, damn. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's what I tell. That's one of my lines for girls too. You know what I'm saying? I'd be like, baby, they don't make them like us. They don't make them like me anymore. <laughs> these, these new kids, they, ain't, no, they, they don't, don't got they don't got what I got. You know what I'm saying? And give it like, damn, baby, you smooth. <laughs> bro, like, that, Latin, yeah. that Latin swag is. You know is, what I'm saying? It's that funny. riz, bro. It's riz. But, crazy. But, but it's funny you say Jay-Z, because I'm going to tell you a little story about Jay-Z. Please, bro. He went to Puerto Rico uh, when I was like, probably like, uh, I don't know, like 11 years old? Like 12 years old? No, no, 13. I was 13 years old. He went to Puerto Rico. And he was in a group called Original Flavor. Yeah. He was singing with a group called Original Flavor. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, can I get open? You know, it was bad. And I was I was taking him around Jay Z when he was no, like nobody knew who he was in Puerto Rico like a, like his tourist guy as a thirteen year old yeah I'll show you the picture no I'll, I'll Google way. it and I'll find it yeah it's got to be around because I posted like fifty times nobody gives a fuck <laughs> I swear to God nobody cares because the picture's kind of fucked up too and you get a Jay Z in the back like, you can't really see him but looking like he has ADD but, and shit. <laughs> yes yes and Damon Dash was like yeah. before Damon Dash was yeah. Damon Dash it was like an old picture. And um, yeah, I took him around, and 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 I don't even know if he's he knows because I know he knows about me, but he, I don't think he knows that I was that kid that took him around Puerto Rico when he didn't know how to you know oh, that's go funny. around. That's, that's crazy. Hilarious. That's yeah. nuts. That's a, yeah. Go ahead. I was I was gonna say I, I I started this interview uh by saying you've been through some shit, and I was right. And I think I think the humblings that life has uh blessed you with allows you to be in the state that you're in where you can appreciate the people coming up and not have uh any resentment or jealousy in, in your heart and also 100%. also it helps that you're still popping you know what i'm saying yeah it helps yeah it's still helps. because if i wasn't still popping it probably be like yeah 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 no i mean it's it's it's, it's it, it makes me happy that i'm still there around and i do collabs with them you know i yeah. do songs with a lot of new cats I've done songs with Bad Bunny. I've done songs with Osuna. I've done songs with uh, Anuel. With all of them, bro. I've done songs. Fade right now is like the biggest <laughs> the one biggest, right now. Uh, and my biggest hit right now is with Fade. This song is like, it's going crazy, crazy right now. It's the top 50 global. So I'm happy, bro. I'm there. They all working. Uh, shout out to Fade. Respect. Because very humble guy. Shout out to Anuel. Shout out to Bad Bunny. Shout out to all of them, bro. They, 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 they make me happy because... Uh, seeing what they doing right now is just insane. It's insane. Seeing what they're doing right now. When you see Bad Bunny running around, jumping off the top rope, slamming dudes in the WWE, <clears throat> the biggest artist in the world right now doing wrestling moves, what is going through your mind? I mean, he a smart ass motherfucker. Because my mentality is a lot of a lot of white kids don't know shit about Spanish music, and but they know about wrestling. And when they see him wrestling, who's this guy, man? Who's this guy? Because, you know, like it's very important. So he's, he's open up to a new audience mm. when he does that. And he has cojones because I, I don't think I could do shit like that. You know, get on the fucking ring, get <laughs> fucking slammed everywhere and shit like yeah. that. I, I respect that. But I think, he's, I think it's smart, you know. Uh, he don't really have to do it because he has already his crew. He has his people. But he's, I, I think, you know, he's, he's making himself more bigger and bigger. Getting a bigger audience. It's hard though. I think cojones is the right word. Yeah. No, what you do, do what you do, bro. What the fuck you talking <laughs> the, about? The difference is this though. And this is what I say to people who are trying to compare me and Bad Bunny in the WWE. I wrestled in high school. I, I did sports and athletics. Like I I am oh, okay. a YouTuber, but like I'm a, I'm an athlete, bro. Yeah. I was an athlete first. I always have You been. boxed before? No, I didn't box before. But like yeah, I, I, but, I wrestled. But, and, but even you wrestle, bro, boxing is a different ball game, true, bro. True, you get true. knocked the fuck out and I, I'm scared of getting knocked the fuck out. But at 42, it looks weird. <laughs> yeah, when you get knocked out when you're young, it don't look funny. But 42, you fucking sneak around and shit. <laughs> it don't look badass. You know what I'm saying? You've been so knocked true. out? No, but I've seen 42-year-old knock the fuck yeah. out. It look funny. Yeah, they don't, yeah. they don't look fun. Yeah. Nah, nah. They don't get up as quick. Nah, I can fight. Don't get it twisted. I can fight, but right now I'm like, shit, bro. I don't even want to fight right now. It's crazy. What is ki these kids bro, are fast? You're, you're so fast. <laughs> these kids are getting fast, man. God, no, I don't. I think the generation right now is like they're stronger and faster now. Like, so quick. <laughs> yeah, bro, because they're drinking prime. Listen, yeah, definitely. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. No, I people people. I can still surprise people because I'm a YouTuber first, but like you know, I was an athlete first. Bunny is a musician, dude. He has oh, yeah. No, he has he's, no business and being no as athlete, good as he no, is. No athlete. 
no, no body at all. Nah, but he comes in there and he and he, and he crushes it. Uh, I think I think I think diversifying is is so important, and I think I think you've even done that right with the, with the acting, yeah, uh, of course, as well, and, and trying to just spread spread yourself out and so you're different not just things. One thing. Yeah, no, no, I cannot be one thing. You know, I'm doing a whole bunch of things right now. Uh, we're actually in Colombia. I'm, uh, I bought this island, and we're doing a, a place called uh, Nido de Agua, and we have a resort. It's crazy. You bought an island? Yeah. Yeah, in, in, uh, Do you, you in ain't, Guatape. You ain't got an island, I don't bro. got an island. I got an island. <laughs> got an island, bro. I, I can say no I got island. an island. And I, and, 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 what's, and you, what you're going to see there is insane, bro. I'll show you, I'll show you later on. So what you are you doing on the island? A resort. Cool. Lazy River? Will there, will there be a Lazy River on it? When yeah. you say Lazy like, River. Well, it's like a... A long pool where you could just like float around on I tubes. I can show you a picture real quick. Pass my telephone. One thing. So yeah, we'll see he this. Said pass, we'll see this he said picture. Pass me my telephone. By the way, we'll just see this know. picture. Dylan, you want to queue up the? Uh, yeah, your silly little game. Talking about games. I want, no, I want to. I want to. I do want to see this because the lazy river might be something to consider at, at your resort because everyone lo loves the lazy river. Oh, wait, Jesus, that's a whole mother of God. Is this a render? This is the render, like yeah. This that's is, the render of what I'm doing. Bro, that looks like a lazy river to me. I think you got a lazy river, dude. I think you do. This is sick. In Guatape. Ask anybody about Guatape. If you can know about come, Colombia, can we come there? Can I show 100%. it? Can I show it? Yeah, you can show it. This is gonna be crazy. Yeah, there's a lazy river right on the outside. You take a tube, yeah. you go from here to here, around this beautiful resort. This is gonna take time and money to build, though. Yeah, I mean, you got both of those. We'll be the. We we good, <laughs> we good, we good, we good. I mean, you know, the reality is that this is. I don't want to. I don't want to do music to maintain a lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? I'm 42 years old, so all I'm thinking about is doing as many projects that I can, so I could just sit down and say, you know what? I'm touring whenever I want to tour. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want to keep living this lifestyle. I want to. I love my plane. <laughs> I love my life. Yeah, I love my plane. I love my Richard Millies. I like my house. I like the lifestyle. So just doing music, music, music. There's going to be one day that people don't want to hear you anymore. Yeah. It's happening. It's normal. So what you got to do is you got to capitalize. So I'm capitalizing like a motherfucker. Diversify. Sharp. Diversify. Sharp, yeah. sharp. So I could just sit back and say, hey, when checks keep coming, I can still live the same lifestyle, you know? It's crazy to me hearing, hearing your story how... How beneficial that dark time in your life has proven to be. Like, I don't know if you would have gotten as big as you are now if you hadn't gone through the shit and, and the dark times and the lowest of the lows. And more so now even just hearing about how you're diversifying and, and you wanting to not fuck up your life now because you did it earlier. Like, you learn so much when you're down. Yeah. And if you can take those, those learnings and apply them to when you're not down and you have a clear head, you're gonna be eons ahead of everyone. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, hey, hey. Some people say you gotta be stupid to be smart. You know what I'm saying? Did they say that? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, it sounds better in Spanish though. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm gonna Speaking be honest. Spanish. A lot of, a lot <laughs> of stuff. Of Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> a veces tiene que ser tiene got, que ser primero estúpido para después ser inteligente. Oh. La verdad. You guys, you do hear that? You Jorge hear, and you hear Kevin? that? You guys yeah. hear that? Yeah. What? what Okay, we got a hey, we got a game. We got a game. Ready? So he's gonna set it up and then just read this. It's basically that's Dylan. Which of these are you gonna say to a girl? Looks like a cat. Yeah, he's a cat producer. Guess which <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I got yeah. what? I'm sorry. So, so basically, this this is all up, he's hearing right now. Which of the following sentences yeah. makes yeah. more yeah. sense yeah. to say? Yeah. So it's like, which of the following would you say to a girl in a bar? And which of the following yeah. would you say to a girl at the bar? Yes, like, who would ask? Who talks like that? No one talks like that. <laughs> okay, so what like a game whatever show he host. asks me, I'll just... <laughs> so you, you set it up. Sounds He's like going to set it up Harvey. and you say, which of the following would you say to a girl in the bar? And then you say it in Spanish. I'll say I it feel, in Spanish. feel okay, bad. Pick. And then after For who? The, wrong thing, the girl at the bar? <laughs> well, no, Nikki. Because okay, he, yeah, he's yeah, listening yeah, to yeah. Dylan and he's listening to us. It's talk funny. shit it's about Dylan. He was playing basketball at 6 a.m. <laughs> I was. <laughs> All right, we have some sentences in Spanish. Okay. Our job is to guess which would be the correct one to use in the given situation. <laughs> Bro, that's so uh, easy for uh, me. D Dylan has this in parentheses. <laughs> a little treat for our Spanish-speaking viewers. Everyone play along at home, too. Okay. <clears throat> so I got I to gotta read this, right? Okay. Which of these, <laughs> which of the following <laughs> would you say? Wait, to are we both playing this together? Or is it just yeah, yeah, yeah? But e each one at a time. No, no. Because I'm gonna get them all. Right. I'll get every single one right. Yeah, you got Riz. No, it's not. I, I'm the Spanish speaker. Okay, so which of the following would you say to a girl in the bar, in Espanol? 
So I gotta read so it. Read it Espanol, so okay. Please. Oye, mami, te ves bella. Me das tu número de teléfono. Or, or tú hueles a cerdo y tienes los pies grandes. The, the, I'm going to say the, the second one. No, 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 it's not. Oh, my God. Tú, tú eres a... Tú, tú, tú. The first one, you're asking for her phone number, dude, or something. The right? second one, I'm saying my dick is big or something? <laughs> no, no, no. You're saying that she smells like pig. Yeah, you fucked and up. And she got Don't, big ass feet. I, uh, well, what if she does have big ass feet? <laughs> you don't say it though. You can't say. Like, <laughs> What's wrong with you? Unless she'll say blunt. some fucked up shit to you. I'm very What's blunt. the first one? Good, good the to first meet you. One, What's your phone number or some the shit? The first one is perfect because you say, "Oh yeah, mommy, the, you look. Hey, baby, you look beautiful. Oh. Can I have your phone number? Oh, I mean, I, I don't never say that shit. Either. You don't say like I have a way better Listen, game than that. Look, look at our producer right now. Does he look like he has game? <laughs> <laughs> hey, he does. He actually, he, he does. Do you want to know why he has game though? Because he has time. You, I think, and he I puts think, in hella effort, bro. <laughs> like he'll just sit there all night. Like, nah, I, I think he has I game because he's confident. He's confident. I, I think you'll say the first one, and then if she says no, then you tell her the second. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> the second one. Said, Fuck, you got big ass. You got big ass. Anyway. You look like a. <laughs> Is there another one? Or, there's three. Do, do one. Okay, do one more. Which of the following would you say when giving a speech? Lo podemos hacer. Y lo vamos a lograr. No tengo calzones puesto. No tengo calzones puesto. You would say that one? Sure. After a speech? Yeah, okay. it feels, feels Well, that means feels I have great. no underwear on yeah. after a speech. That would be something he should say because. I don't. I think if you say that after a speech, you'll, you'll fucking kill it. Actually. <laughs> That's actually great. That's actually people, great. I don't think it's a bad punchline. Hey, you want to hear something funny? It's fuck this game, Dylan. <laughs> no, it was not. That was good. No, it was good. It was good. I like it. But I, I do have a funny, a funny uh, translation story. Uh, when I was boxing, preparing for Floyd Mayweather, um, I, I would spar uh, uh, some Mexican fighters a lot, and they're very good, very tough. Oh, because they they, <laughs> they train in the height, so they don't they don't get tired. They're they're very tough, and uh, I I learned to say the following while I was boxing: uh, "Yo soy chingón." Yo soy chingón. It means like I'm a badass, or yeah, so, yeah. you know. So I'd be talking shit in the in ring. In Puerto Rico, it means I, I fuck a lot. So I found that out because I went to Puerto Rico. <laughs> Started sparring. I'm like, oh, I know a thing to say in Spanish. <laughs> I be sparring these these dudes. I go, yo soy chingón. And they start laughing. They start laughing at me. The coaches are laughing at me. Everyone's laughing. I'm like, what happened? Because apparently the translation isn't quite the same. I thought it means like I'm a motherfucker or like. Yeah, some... well, in Mexico, yeah, in Mexico it means like I'm the shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm a strong, bad motherfucker. But in in and um, and in Puerto Rico means you have a lot of sex. <laughs> so I'm, so I'm, I'm in round five. We're sweating our asses off. And I'm like, I have a lot of sex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm working yeah, they on my don't, They don't know how to fucking react to that. They're like, well, you know, we too. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, got, I, I got some lessons to take. I'm a I'm a gringo, dude. I don't know. What That's to crazy. Say. Nah, but you 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 uh you a badass gringo, bro. I'm I'm trying to learn Spanish. I'm trying to learn Spanish. But you know what? You know what my fear? How is it to live in Puerto Rico? You like it? I yeah. love I love Puerto Rico. I could go on and on about Puerto Rico. It's but, and, and I feel I feel like because I live there, I should learn Spanish. My, my my issue is this. I have this belief that in like five years we're gonna be able to wear glasses or put a chip on in our ear or some shit that can translate and speak for you <laughs> and tell you what to say. That's not gonna happen. And you lucky you in Puerto Rico because Puerto Ricans speak a lot of English, like the, m way more than other countries. Because Puerto Rico is like very close to the U.S. and it has a lot of U.S. Uh, culture. But yeah, yeah, yeah. If I, you would have been like in a different country, I'm not saying they don't speak English in in other Spanish countries, yeah. but Puerto Rico speak. A lot. There's a lot. not. There's not a huge language barrier. Exactly. Yeah. So for you, it's going to be hard to learn Spanish in Puerto Rico. Uh, we have the, we have the tutor. We just got to do it. I just travel a lot. I'm, I'm going to do it. I just. I it's I like want to learn English in Miami. <laughs> I, I'm in the states, so I'm gonna, <laughs> oh, you you in Spanish town, baby? Yeah, yeah, facts. facts. What about Duolingo? Duolipa? Yeah, I heard too. You know Duolipa? Uh, yeah. <laughs> You gotta get, get a lipo? What the fuck y'all talking about? You get, lipo? You get lipo, lipo, do a lipo? What are you it's saying? I teach you Spanish. I tried it. I tried it. Wait, wait, um, wait. Yeah, yeah. Yo, 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 como manzana. That's yo. good. You eat apple. <laughs> I yo, eat como apple. manzana. I eat apple. Uh, what else do you know? You're so chingon. You're so chingon. <laughs> hey. hey, man, that's all you need. Eat apple and just fuck a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you need apple. That's, that's not a bad life. That's not a bad life wait, at all. Wait, are you, are you here in uh, Miami full time? Yeah. You I'm love Miami. Miami? I love Miami. I'm a Miami guy, 100%, yeah. bro. If you, uh, what? Because I'm what? always in the water. I'm always in, oh, the, I yeah. was in my boat and, 
And, you know, it's just, uh, I don't know, for some reason, I feel like in Miami, it's not about partying and shit like that. It's just that I feel like it makes me want to get bigger and bigger. You know, like there's always some motherfucker bigger than you. Mm. You have your yacht and then a yacht fucking 50 times bigger than your <laughs> fucking yacht. And you feel like, oh shit. Yeah, Dude, yeah. imagine you were, he was like cr crushing it, bro. Had the biggest yacht and all of a sudden crypto happens. And he looks around, it's just all these like billionaire No, bro, it fucking happens. Miami. It happens. Yeah. There's never, you never have nothing. You're fucking idiot in Miami. There's always somebody with something bigger. Yeah, and it's funny. It sounds like a giant dick measuring contest. You never happen. You never happen when you're like in your yacht with a girl, and then this guy pulls up with a big ass fucking yacht. You're like, I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah, but, so we, we don't have yachts, man. So that's not happening. <laughs> but you rent the yacht. You get a yacht. Come on. You I just money. call Purple. I'm like, yo, whose yacht are we going on oh, today? Yes, yes. I, I imagine Purple loves that. <laughs> <laughs> he loves that. I went to Culebra. Culebrita. Culebra. 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 Oh my god. It was beautiful. Cool spot I've seen in Puerto Rico. I think I think is is one of the coolest spots in the world. Did have you gone to the um the little tide pools on the side of Culebra? No. Nah. There's little tide pools there, and there's two rocks that open up to the ocean. It's like a connection between a, a very shallow, clear water tide pool and the deep, dark ocean between two like gates. Looks like it's incredible. We went snorkeling there, like yeah. you know, you know, Culebra I mean, reminds me of that movie uh, Beach. DiCaprio. Oh, yeah, yeah, Leonardo mm, DiCaprio. Mm, mm. That's, a, that's a fucking crazy movie. Mm, I run that back every once in a while. Yeah, I love that, song. that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, one song, that movie's insane, man. That's a man. weird one, bro. It is weird. I what liked happens it. at the end? He, like, takes acid. He's running. He's and in he a goes, video game. And he's playing PlayStation. You know I don't yeah. know what the fuck. Nintendo watch some that shit. shit back, bro. That's a badass movie. It's a classic. It's a crazy movie. Yeah. yeah. Have you tried Prime? No, what's, what's that? Good question. See? That's prime right there. Oh, you gotta humble the kid, dude. You got to. I like. I like. This that, is good. that was your answer. This is good. I really it's like an energy that was drink. Your answer. Uh, the one is an energy drink. The other is a hydration beverage. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a better for you hydration beverage. Can I try it? It's the. It's in my humble opinion the best on the market. Yeah, I'd love for you to try it. Uh, that's blue raspberry. Are you a blue raspberry yeah, guy? No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's blue raspberry. Because the energy I can't drink. Gonna... Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I feel. I feel. I feel you. There's a lot of caffeine in those. I look well. down. Here. Sure. Yeah. No, no, not that. That's hydration. Oh shit. It's good. That's my drink. That's this is my yours? drink. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. really good. Yeah, it's man. me me and my business partner KSI, the, the guy I boxed. But uh when I saw you when I saw you get here and you know, deal with the boxes yourself to promote your shit, I respect that. Thanks, bro. We I, got, was, I look at everything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we gotta hustle. Like, we gotta hustle, like, bro. You know what I'm saying? He's like, <laughs> I could see cause I knew it was something that had to do about your shit and you were like Packing your, your own well, shit. Well, that wasn't hey, really. I love he knew you were here, bro. He, he, <laughs> he, bro, he, he ain't doing any of that shit, bro. He's got like six box carriers, no, bro. That's no. their only job. <laughs> no, I carry, Crazy, I carry the boxes. Dude, but don't I, know I, I, Trabajo at all, dude. I believe in the product. I love it, and I think hopefully, inshallah, you'll be hearing about it one day in a, in a big business way. Like, like I, I hope to be, it, bro. I hope to be hearing about your resort and every other thing 100%. you're doing. I, I want to go to your resort. Hey, and you, you like pancakes? Yeah, I love pancakes. I got the best pancake spot here. It's called Industria. It's your it's your actual spot in it's Miami. It's my spot. You see a fucking picture. Of uh, wait, 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 wait. Can I come? Can I come uh, shoot a YouTube video at it? hundred percent. Can, can, can you come? Crazy. Can you come yes, to it? hundred percent. I do food on my on my channel. Bro, it gets when you see my views. spot, you're gonna fucking go. No, crazy. I want to. I'm the dead fucking serious. pancakes are insane. It's just the the pancake. Oh, put it all over. Oh, my, Nikki Jim, we got it. We got to connect, bro. Here, let me get your number. Just say it for all the people to hear. <laughs> yeah. <all right. laughs> Yeah, I'm sure we can yeah. do this after the show. <laughs> no, no, we're doing it right now. If you guys want to text Nikki Jam, <laughs> this is his <laughs> number. This is his number. You know, once I, uh, I, I put uh, Jay Balvin's uh, WhatsApp on Instagram. It happens, and it fucking and oh, it's it over. blocked, and it, yeah. it went fucking crazy. Yeah, it happens. We've all we've you done all that before? Actually, aired out our friends. Yo, that yeah, shit is yeah, crazy. Like live streaming and stuff like that. It's usually like Aiden that. Ross's fault. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's usually Aiden's Constantly. fault. Constantly. Okay, yeah, man, I'm down to go get some pancakes. Oh, go today, so bro. Good. You're gonna love the spot, bro. Actually, actually, might we have? Some we have time. a we have a we have another show today. Yeah, we do have time. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I don't know my camera guy, dude, and I want to shoot there. Oh, why is he not here? He is sleeping because we didn't sleep. Uh, I didn't yeah. sleep. Yeah. He had to sleep. There you go. You know, Thank you, you know who we have on today, Prince Royce. Oh yeah. Yeah. Very my my brother. Yeah. Very humble dude. Any weird shit we should ask him? Like secret shit that nobody knows about? Oh, shit. No, nah, I don't want to do that to him. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, I, I, he's I just, just so nah, nah, he's sure. so cool, bro. So laid back. He's he's he's, he's kind of like, uh, 
How do you say that? He's uh, how do you say that shit? It's fucking I be wor forgetting words in English. Um, fucking gringo words. Shy. He's shy as fuck. Oh, oh really? Great. Yeah, he's okay. a shy kid. Like he's not really like the. He's shy. Oh, we can put shy. him to the test. Yeah. yeah. Bring him out of his shell. <laughs> yeah. Dude, this has been great. Hey, I appreciate you guys so much. Fantastic, bro. I had I laughed like a motherfucker. Yeah, I had fun, and uh, and uh, you know I just thank you, thank you guys for the for the. For the interview and thank you for the love. I hope you guys go eat pancakes at my spot. Well, we are, we are doing. And that. definitely, we gotta go chill in Puerto Rico, bro. I for would sure. love to go to Culebra sure. and and you live in Dorado. I live in Dorado, yeah. I fucking love Dorado. It's so nice. The next time you're there, bro, hit me up. You have my no, no, we're now. gonna be we're gonna be talking. Okay. We gotta okay. do business. We gotta do have fun. We got everything. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All love, man. God bless. We love you, you too, bro. man. We gotta link up. I'm, so. com I'm coming to the pancake spot for yeah. sure. And and give you give him my number. Yeah, we'll connect. Yeah. All right, Nikki Jam, ladies and gentlemen. Damn. What a great episode. Guys, thank you for listening to this episode of Impulsive. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. Peace.